So today I decided I'd review Metro Exodus, the brand new installment to the Metro series. So the Metro series, um, just to give you a bit of background, is based in a post-apocalyptic future. Uh, it's actually based in Moscow in Russia, so the whole idea is there's been a nuclear um, apocalypse. Every country launched their nuclear missiles everywhere and um, the people of Moscow retreated to the, the underground railway system because that's actually um, was the plan if there was a nuclear war that they retreat there because that's the safest place in the city. So this game picks up um, pretty soon after Metro 2033 I believe that was the second game in the installment um, and you are still Archum, um, who is the main character of the series. It's actually based on a, a series of books by a Russian author. So, you're straight away thrust into uh, another scenario where you're underground, you're in the railway tunnels, and um, you're trying to get back to your your base. So, there's quite a few little settlements in the um, city, but you're, you're now, um, at this stage in the story, one of the elite... Um, defenders of, of the realm and what's happened is because there was a nuclear disaster mutants have appeared so they're these weird mutants um, I know from the other games that there's flying gargoyles and you do see them in the um, Metro Exodus really close to the start thank God you don't have to fight them because they are really really difficult I, I still have nightmares about fighting them in the um, other Metro games so, um, I'm, I'm trying to get back to a base and uh, I, I encounter an outpost that was trying to be set up by some people who had run away from a safe settlement um, and they had been swamped by these monsters, these others, um, these mutants that attack. So, I, uh, <laughs> Metro is really, really good at setting up like a heavy suspense. It's, it's very much a thriller game and... Yeah, you, you really feel it, and I felt it straight away in this game. You're, you're in the dark, you have a, um, a light on the end of your gun, so you can shine that at um, any, <laughs> just pretty much in the whole tunnel system. I, I'm terrible with this game at being fast too. I take my time as I go through the tunnels, um, because I don't want to, to get in a really crap position when these things attack you. Because it is, um, as well as being a story-based game, a thriller game, it's a little bit of a survival game. So if you're outside, for example, you have to put a gas mask on and you have rebreathers on the end, which you have to constantly swap out because they get so heavily polluted and you need to, um, you know, save yourself from the radiation. All your bullets, they actually double up as currency. The bullets you use um, for the majority of the game are, are actually like B-grade bullets. They're, they're ones that have been made in the um, this post-apocalyptic world and they're they're not seen as um, as good quality as um, bullets made in like what would be the current age by by today's militaries and industry, and those bullets are actually the currency of the game. So any old um, bullets from before the disaster, they are currency, which is is pretty cool. Um, you can shoot them, but I I've never really found myself shooting them except for in the like most dire of situations. So. Um, as I was exploring this outpost, you hear the, the mutants all around you, like they're going above the ceilings, you hear them through the walls, um, you, you can see them out of the corner of your eye in all sorts of spots, and I, I was really, um, I, I have to remember this is a PG friendly review, but I was uh, something bricks um, while I was going through. When you, as I was going through a train, because there are still trains uh, in the tunnel, and coming out the other end, that's when they came, <laughs> of course. And I, I actually died the first time when I was fighting, um, because I tried to hunker down in a corner and just shoot these guys with a shotgun, but I ran out of bullets. So um, I found out I had to run for a door, just like not look behind me, just get to the door, hope they don't catch me, and get through. Um, so I, I managed to get through that opening story and then the, we, we got into the main storyline and Archum has always believed um, that there are other settlements out there that surely 
the 30,000 odd people who survived in Moscow aren't the the only people to survive the post-apocalyptic um, disaster. So they um, he's he's setting up all sorts of radio signals all over the place, and the boss of the settlements, the boss of the the task force he's now in doesn't like that. Um, it doesn't help that Archum is dating this guy's daughter, so he, he doesn't want Archum putting these ideas in his daughter's head and risking her life, um, which he absolutely is, because once you um, go to the settlement and get a bollocking um, after you've nearly died um, from this mutant attack and you actually were in hospital, um, you you're it cuts to the scene where you're on a tall building setting up a radio signal that's when i see the scary gargoyles and um where we're searching for this base i i didn't get too much further into the game unfortunately um i did run out of time after that but i know that um from the trailers and i do want to say spoiler alert i'll leave you a little bit of time in case you want to pause there is another settlement. Um, so there's another settlement in Russia that is a cult. Um, it's like a religious cult. Um, I, I think they might even worship the mutants. So I think I'm going to have to come back to you guys and do a, um, a catch up as I get further through the story. But I do um, really, really enjoy this game. So if you are someone who likes first person shooters, who likes survival aspects, um, who likes modern guns, um, who likes that post-apocalyptic feel, but still with like a, a very realistic scenario, this is absolutely a game for you. It always has me on the edge of my seat. No matter where I am, I'm just expecting something to try scare me, to jump out from all the corners and, and attack me. So I really recommend that, uh, this game. I, I'm a huge fan. Um, when it does come to our reviews though, remember um, if you didn't catch it, we are reviewing this with Ninja Cat, so um, we're going to review the gameplay, the graphics, and the storyline out of five Ninja Cats. So, the in terms of the graphics, I think I'll start there. I would give this game a, a three and a half Ninja Cats, and I, that's not because the graphics are bad. But um, remember that is above average in graphics, but. They, um, they probably don't dedicate a heck of a lot of time. It does seem to run on the same engine as the last games. So it's not necessarily, um, you know, going to be on the same level as something like Sea of Thieves, which we've got a, a review coming to you guys shortly on um, and how that has evolved. It's uh, probably not quite up on the level of The Division 2 either, um, but it's not bad. So I, I, I'm going to give it that. Um... When it comes to actual gameplay, personally I'm a huge fan of the gameplay. I'm going to give that a 4 out of 5 Ninja Cat. So it is a really solid um, level of gameplay. I enjoy um, the survivalistic in, um, side. It's not so intense that it like puts off people who haven't encountered that genre before. Um, but it's definitely enwraps you in it. Uh, you do feel like um, you have to be very careful. You can't just go out and be a juggernaut like in some other games. So if you're looking for a game like that, maybe try Crackdown 3. Um, this isn't isn't that type of game. When it comes to um, the actual storyline, I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 Ninja Cats. I love the story of this um, game, of this series. I actually want to buy the box and read them. That's how far into the storyline I've gotten. So... I think it's very good at picking up where you left off. I love the different factions you get, the different characters you encounter. Um, it really does kind of create this really cool global thing. I love picking up the little bits of paper on the ground and reading them and finding out what different um, NPCs have run into. I, I'm a huge fan. So if you again, if you like story-driven games, if you like survival games, you like thriller games, this is absolutely up your alley and something you should try out. Um, so, I want to give you guys a reminder, this is something relatively new that we started doing, so if you haven't seen our last Game Pass, go check out the one Steve did on Formula 1 2018. We are sticking to the Xbox Game Pass game library at the moment to really show you guys the, the value of that. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with our podcasts and game reviews in the future. And uh, if you haven't... Um, heard about this we are streaming through the 
EZANZ Mixer channel. So I will chuck a link down here, um, just like Steve loves us to do, so that you can hop on and see me, him, um, maybe Hannah do a few, or, or any of the other um, master trainers around the place. So definitely check us out and give us some follows. Oh, 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 oh,